Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Gamescom LOL Challenge. We're gearing up for the finals now, the grand finals. The best of three weighted best of three, in fact, between Ninjas in Pajamas and H2K Gaming. I am Andrew Spuddington Spurrier. I'm joined by Ushin. Close. Ush I'll give it to you. I'll give it, it to you. He... Yeah. Malloy. <laughs> he is, there is actually an accent on the second I, which apparently makes it a very strange sound, but it yeah. doesn't really matter. Irish names are weird. They're yeah. always, they're always going to be weird. Oisin. <laughs> Sounds like Oisin sauce. But the game. <laughs> yes, the game. Obviously, H2K coming in with that game advantage. They did go mm -hmm. through the entirety of the winner's bracket. Yeah. This is pajamas, though, look. Inspired today, almost freeze. They they got freeze of favorite champion on Kogma. They were able to uh, get past SK Prime. Not which was not expected. Not expected at all, really. But they did it in more kind of a more convincing fashion than we've seen the rest of their games beat. Yeah, I, uh, there's still potentially big weak, big big weaknesses. They were very much carried by freeze. The rest of the team did okay, did solidly. Yeah. But uh, H2K are well known for having extremely solid laning potential. So. Top lane, mid lane, all these things, they need to make sure they do well. H2K's banning strategy is most likely to be targeted against Freeze. You may see them try and pick away the Nami, which has been a crucial component to the laning power of Freeze. Keep him off the Cogmore, keep him off the Lucian, and then see if they can force him onto something less carry potential like Corky. Yeah, I wouldn't. Know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if H2K ban out the Lucian and then first pick the Kogma because it's just as we've just seen. There's very few AD carries that can go against yeah. that matchup, and it's still a a very highly contested matchup because. Yes, Maokai is ex extremely strong. We actually saw Alistair eventually get items within a game yes. and became incredibly powerful. He was powerful. very, very difficult very, to do. Very, very, very yeah. difficult to do. Incredibly tanky, tons and tons of damage, not just because of the Triforce, but because of his passive and everything like that. So it was just very nicely done the way they Ninja's Pajamas were able to transition their laning phase from yeah. the kills that they did pick up. They lost a couple of object objectives early, but SK Prime kind of let the snowball just roll down a steeper hill and it just kind of got out of control. It got to a point where SK Prime just couldn't do anything. There was no way to team fight because of the scaling differences and there was no way to apply map pressure. Again, because of the scaling differences partly, uh, but also just because Ninjas and Pajamas were playing such a, a, a bold, pushing, sieging style. Yeah. See if H2K can stop that ball before it rolls, though. Yeah, and as well as that, like, they they knew that they were leaving the cast and open in the SK Prime versus NIP game. Yeah. You you can't leave cast and I just I feel like at the moment before the four point one four nerfs, he's still too much he has too much mobility, too much late game power. He's able to jump in once he gets a Zanyas. Yes, you can technically burst him down if you do not uh, we saw a couple of charms or something like that, but it got to that stage where because they had to deal with the Castle as well as the Kogma, as well as try and get away from the Alistair, like there was so many things they had to try and micromanage about. Yeah. That it was very, very difficult for them to do it. They were in a bit of a, a, a finicky situation, though, because their pick at that point, they did not know what mid laner they were going up against. So if you try and pick a counter to Cassidy, it's very likely you're going to get Twisted Fated, basically, yes. which is not a verb, but it now is. Um, regardless, though, guys, if you feel like uh, we are obviously just waiting on the players to get into the lobby and Champions League to start, you feel like checking out Face It in the brief time you have left while we waffle, uh, feel free to do so. Faceit.com is a uh, site that will enable you to get matched up against teams and players of a similar skill level and compete for fabulous prizes. Also, check out TeamSpeak and Overwolf, good pieces of software. Uh, but, H2K. There's not a lot to talk about here. They're just consistent. They're very good. Yes, at they're League very, of very, very, very good. They obviously they're the top seed going up from to the promotion tournament. They have walked past pretty much everybody Everyone. they've they've come against in this tournament. They haven't faced Ninjas and Pajamas yet, so nope. but they literally this could be just a best of one if they win this game. It's you know, it is technically a best of three, but Ninjas and Pajamas need to win two games in a row in order to take it. They have got the weight advantage. They have got the game in hand. I just feel that H2K, considering how strong their individual play is and how well they mesh up as a team, it's just too much for Ninja Pajamas with this saturated lineup to deal with. I, I still have to favor H2K too. It, it, it's just difficult with the subs. It's so difficult to compete with that level of shot calling. The mid-game roaming, picking, all the rest of it from uh, H2K is very, very good. 
as is there everything else. But yeah, of course, that will be interesting to see. I'd mm. like to see how their bot lane does against Ninja the Pajamas. Obviously, we've highlighted Ninja the Pajamas bot lane as the the carry lane. This yes. is the one that's this been doing really a lot of solid. work. Yes, so this is the most solid work. So it'll be interesting to see if H2K maybe concentrate a little bit of you know kind of focus down there with the jungler. Maybe go with a twist of fate, get a you know like global kind of pressure as well. Like we've seen quite a bit of uh, aggression coming out from H2K when they get that not good early uh, mid laner. He's very very good on it. So. I honestly think that they'll probably prioritize the Maokai and uh, rinse and repeat. Every single strategy they've gone with, it's been very similar to one they've played before, so why why change what's not broken? Yeah, realistically, the thing H2K needs to do is shut down Freeze. Yes. So whatever picks they can do to do that, and whatever bands they can focus to do that, that's why I'm predicting the uh, Cogmore and the Lucian. Uh, most likely, actually, they might, they might well try and... Uh, leave Lucian open and pick it away from Freeze, mm. uh, simply because Hyanan, it's also Hyanan's favorite character. Uh, but I'm certainly expecting a Cogmore ban if they've done any research at all. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll probably be, we'll probably see two AD carry bans. Uh, probably Lucian on one side, the Cogmore on the other. So mm. then we might get a couple of variations. Corky obviously being the big standout as the next person to pick up. Yeah. High burst. I'm just not convinced. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of him either. I feel like you could go with a. Uh, slightly more reliable picks like if you want to win the lane then we'll pick up a Kate then she is always going to be super strong with that range she's she always has fallen off the face of the planet yes she um, hasn't has a bit been nerfed. weird yeah hasn't been nerfed hasn't been touched she's perfectly I mean, fine she, she doesn't have a great lane against two of the major popular picks at the moment which is the Cogmore and is the Lucian Could but I feel against something like a Corky yeah or a Tristana she she's actually extremely good against Tristana yeah I uh, I feel like that can work very very well so We'll see, I suppose. Yeah. I think definitely the bot lane is our featured matchup. If we were to have one, it's definitely to see how the yes. bot lane transitions and yeah. just to see how the AD carries kind of go for it. Because uh, as much as I don't like to say it, because I don't, I, I think a team is you know is a team five players, but Freeze has got the team on his shoulders. He was playing out of his mind. Yes, in, he is. In the last he has game. been absolutely amazing in the last game. He is going to be very much targeted in picks and bans in the game everything by H2K, so they need to be able to keep him safe. Not only that, but Ninjas and Pajamas need to step up. Yeah, of course, they've got to remember to keep uh, tabs on the enemy teams. Uh, you might want to see... We're still expecting to see the Fizz ban against Istari, just because it's his his shtick. Picks Don't expect a new new ban, though. No, probably yeah. not. There I is still that, you know, one-off yeah. potential, though. I'm so fresh, played a very good Lee Sin, though, in the last game. He it was... It was actually a bit dodgy early game. Yes, it was very but dodgy but early but game. His late game, his his peeling for the Cogmore was excellent. Yes, he got some amazing ultimates off, getting three or four people knocked up in the process. It was just a very, very nice kind of, you know, kind of a change to see Elisa. Because I've seen Elisa recently, and they've kind of lackluster getting the one single target kick. But when you get those nice AoEs, you can see the power potential that they bring. So do you see two mid lane bands in Oriana and Cassidy? Pretty standard. Yeah, there's nothing too amazing here. Of course, they are running out of bands at this point. So if you want to be keeping away the cog, cog more, the high-value AD carries, Twisted Fate is very understandable from NIP. Yes. And Twisted. as far as they're concerned, though, it's probably pretty good that all these bands are being focused on the mid lane because now there's only one band that can be forced onto an AD carry. And if HK do that, of course, they can then try and pick it away. Yes. But... Uh, if, if NIP can at least try... If, if HK don't ban an AD carry now, then they get one of the two high-priority high picks. Yeah, I think it's going to be... Wow. No, it's not. Okay. okay. Also, there are no mid laners available right now. No, there is. there are not. Well, Ari. Ari's still there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Ari, okay. yeah, Ari, Ari will be there. Ari is still there. So, so is Zerath. Forbidden does play a little bit of, Z of, of Zerath. He's yeah. very good on that champion. Yeah. Who do they ban out though? Because they're leaving. If they ban out, say another mid laner, they're leaving quite a bit open. You've the Maokai, the Kogma, the Lucy, and the. There's a lot of different matchups, and uh, it's going to be rather difficult. The Nidley. Surely NIP will want to take Kogma Nami again. If not Kogma, they're going to get Lucian, Nami. Yeah. But will they get Lucian either as well? They're going to pick up the Ari, which I think is a very very strong pick as well, because mm. considering the bans, the heavy mid lane focus. Yeah, they don't need to rush out the support pick now that Nami isn't yes, an option exactly. for them. They could secure Maokai in the top lane. That could be two very, very solid lanes, but I imagine they will go for the Kog'Maw. It, it's a likely choice, but they may save it because they're not, again, 
if you if you wait and you pick up Lucian in response to an enemy Cogmore, you can actually make that work very very well for you. So don't do it. I'm so fresh. Don't do it. It could, it could happen. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. There we go. Fair enough. Little panic attack there. Ribbon Jungle, we've seen it. It's not bad. Mm. Didn't really do anything. I yeah. would prefer I don't believe it, was it wasn't I'm So Fresh that ran it, was no, it? No, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, so. I can't exactly remember who ran it, but it didn't really. Do Ooh. Could happen. It I would wouldn't expect the Amumu. Well Zed, though, is very, very possible. I could see the Amumu actually being picked up because. It brings an awful lot of lockdown for the Kog'Maw. The Biven is a very good Yasuo. Yeah. It's this not a bad matchup against Ari. There is a lot of champions left open now for both sides. And they're almost spoiled for choice, realistically. They don't really know what to choose because uh, <laughs> there's everything available. The mid lane was heavily brought, uh, banned ah. out. There we go. See Trashy going on to Lee Sin. He's a very good Lee Sin player. Lucy going to be picked up okay. as well. They're not going to show their mid or their top just yet. Hmm. But I imagine the jungle and support will be picked up here by Nip. They'll just leave the top lane in the, in the, in the back pocket just for the moment, yeah. just in case they need to counter it. Yeah, the, I'm expecting expecting Maokai here from NIP. It's the safe pick. It's, uh, it's telling that OGN finals in the blind pick game, it was Maokai <laughs> versus Maokai top, is a very, very safe pick to run into anything. Also fits with their composition very, very well. They're going forward with Cogmore right now. Question is what support they're going to run with Cogmore. They know they're up against Lucian Nami. Yeah, they have that's a that's an incredibly strong lane as well. You need someone with Cogmore who can help him sustain a little bit, keep him safe. But it's just gonna be taking so much harass from you know, Yarnan. I'm almost we've seen the Lulu pick a couple of times, fits very well with the composition, but I'm almost tempted to say a Sona pick wouldn't go amiss here. It's since the rework. Her sustain is actually pretty good. Her damage is pretty good. Synergizes in the style of play that Cogmore likes to play because he does a couple of auto attacks where you can proc that uh, Q bonus damage. But, of course, it's not a popular pick at the moment. People it could still be picked up. Could be a little latched onto it. They may not like it. Uh, I haven't seen it very much just at all at the moment. So it may well be that they've trialed it in solo queue and thought, hmm, maybe a bit too susceptible to, uh, to being engaged on still. But... Uh, they left the Maokai open. Mm. Remember with Zin Zhao jungle as well. We've seen this a couple of times from I'm So Fresh. He likes <laughs> the Zin Zhao, but with the options that were available to him, knowing he was going against Elise, and honestly, I, felt, I feel he should have went with Jarvan. I think you're probably right about that. Jarvan works very, very well. I mean, he ran it. Uh, or rather, Kikis actually ran it, didn't he? Uh, didn't work that well against <laughs> against Lee Sin when we saw it earlier. I still think Jarvan the Fourth works very well against Lee Sin, in spite of the evidence presented towards me, which is very, uh, very evangelical of me. I am a Jarvan evangelical. Anyway, NIP last pick available, Alistair. Yes, I probably, I, it's, almost it's, certainly. Yeah, there it is. I it was not really going to be anybody else. Lulu Top is kind of fallen out of favor. She has gone back into support role a little bit. Incredibly mana hungry. She's going to have a tough time trading with the Nami. Hmm. We do see the Alistair locked in. So honestly, Kawashar he faced this earlier today, so he's comfortable on it. He yeah. needs to get farm and items, though. That's the big thing with Mau uh, with Maokai versus Alistair. If he can get an early Triforce, get it into a tankier item. He saw him go lock it. Wouldn't, wouldn't actually be too uh, surprised if he went it again, but mm. he needs to get those items. Neither of these two top laners are going to be able to deny each other farm. I doubt we're going to see much jungle pressure up there either, since the focus should be on the bottom lane and making that snowball. The mid lane rise versus Ari. I'm actually not sure whether Rise is a good pick into that. It used to be considered a counter. That used to be the thing. But we have to remember since those days, this was because it was a long, long time ago, back way back when, Rise's range is a lot lower than it used to be. Yeah, he's, he's still got, got the movement speed. He can still maybe engage. Yeah. But Ari can just charm him whenever he's trying to get aggressive, push the wave in, look to roam. Yeah, I think I think the Rise pickup was kind of like a safe laner. Mm. With the late game insurance, realistically, yeah. being able to jump onto uh, Freeze's Kogma, being able to blow him up. Because he does build a lot of tank items, but obviously with his passive giving him percentage mana and uh, ability power towards that, he should be able to deal with it. We did see a little bit of Voidal and uh, Kamachard topping the Alistair and Lulu. I didn't really think they were going to uh, have Lulu top in the end. Messing about. Messing about. But uh, I hear... Herein lies the issue for NIP. If they do not, if they get a freeze 
a little bit down in the laning phase. If the trashy ganks work, if Odwami teleports behind and kills them, they're screwed. Oh, they yes. They have so <laughs> little <laughs> other damage. They've got Ari, and maybe if, if Istari is actually really snowballing out of control and Cogmore is doing badly, then maybe they can use that to uh, ameliorate the problem they may suffer. But without Breeze doing well in lane, they are going to suffer real problems, and this is going to be their hardest matchup yet. Lucian Nami is a very, very strong lane. Hyun and AOD is a very, very strong pair of laners, and they are running their favorite combo. But yeah, just going to now see a little bit of evade, but uh, to anybody in the Twitch chat wondering why it's 1-0 to H2K if you've just joined us, it is, of course, H2K gaining a game in hand from the best of three for winning every single match in the winner's bracket and getting into the final through that. So it could be a best of one for them. It could be two games in the row for Ninja's Pajamas. could be 1-1 in the H2K. You never yeah. know. But Ninja's Pajamas Ninja's need to be playing this as if it's a best of one. Yeah, indeed. They need to focus very, very hard on winning the game. Sounds like a sounds like an oxymoron, or not an oxymoron. That's the wrong word. But uh, <laughs> sounds like a tautology or a truism. A truism. truism that's the, the word. Yes, definitely. Um, the word. But it isn't necessarily so much. Sometimes people do actually lose focus mid-series. Now, just having a look at the bot lane. They're looking to see if they can find out where the, the they're trying to find out where the Ninja Pajamas bot lane. They know wrong. they have the stronger bot lane. There's yeah. no wards here, though. This could be a successful invade. Yeah. Oh. Is he going to walk in? Hjarnin. Oh, Glitter here Lance. we go. There we go. Glitterland's going to go in. They popped up the exhaust as well. He's going to flash away. It's not going to be enough. No way. Here's the heal. <gasps> Way is there? No, there's not. First blood going over. Three flashes used in the end. Very nice to get the kill and the steal. Nicely start. They're getting freeze off to a good start. Get Kog'Maw off to a good start. Yes. The only thing is, though, as you mentioned, three flashes. The exhaust used. The heal is actually down on Hyana, but that's not going to be important if there's future pressure from Trashy. H2K needs to identify this fact and they need to take advantage of it in the early game, in the next five minutes. If they can do that, they still have the potential to reclaim a good scenario from that start off, which is otherwise really, really bad for them. Yeah. And honestly, that was just a lack of uh, concentration there, in my opinion, from H2K. Like, we normally see that when you go for those early, early invades and the enemy, te and the enemy team yeah. sees you, you would naturally ward your own buff that you've just invaded the opposite side of so that you know exactly where they are. When you see the level 2 being hit there by Kog'Mo, he's just trying to go a little bit aggressive. He will have that advantage for quite a significant while, actually, because yeah. uh, he's doing quite a good job of zoning Garnet out of here. Yep, trading auto attacks as well with Voidal. Curious if the if the uh, the picks passive procs spell these multiple times because if so then because uh, it is three different instances of damages so it should. Yeah, oh, we do see Trashy there we're going into Ostari. They do fire, they do get the kill though. Flash is burned on the side, but here comes I'm so fresh. He knows okay. there's no flash. He knows there's no heal. It's a great bubble, but it's not going to be enough. Is, is it? it? It is. It's no! going to be enough. What? Freeze overextends. They get a good bubble. I'm so fresh. He goes down. Wow. Overeager. They thought the turret was going to be aggro onto I Am So Fresh, thinking that Freeze was going to be able to get the kill. Very, very unfortunate there, and very nice work there from AOD. It was a clutch heal. Really, really clutch heal at the very, very end there. If Freeze had died there, it would have been worth it if he had killed Hyanan in the process, but he was so caught off guard by that heal. Hyanan dying there would have meant he lost a lot of experience in farm. Freeze was pushed out. But as it is, of course, he just lost that first blood advantage he'd gained. Hyanan is set up now very, very effectively. Should be able to push this out, go back, try to pick up some extra damage. Breeze going for the early game option here. Boots, double Dorans, pots. That is a very sensible move. He's trying to secure himself in this lane, but that has cost him. That was very much over eager. Did you see I'm so fresh? Okay. Another I think they got the room piers and a little bit of damage trade back. Forbivid definitely winning that trade. Yeah, already we are seeing, as we said at the start, an incredibly uh, aggressive bot lane. They really want to get Freeze going. Yeah, and divergent playstyle as well, because I'm so fresh went for the bot lane game. Trashio was looking to get this mid lane going. He wants to get the rise going for the 
power spikes obviously with his associated big items and that's a very understandable thing to do since Rise does scale really monstrously. But if Freeze hadn't died there, he'd be 2-0. Oh, or 2-1 oh, most likely. 2-1 oh, most likely, but if he had, then that would, that would be a really scary thing. And Rise, even if he gets very farmed, does still have issues closing on Cogmore. He's got to deal with the Glitterlock, he's got to deal with the Voidus, he's got to deal with the 700 range, which actually outranges the spell casts. And Camo Shard as well. Alistair can knock mm. him away, even if he doesn't He doesn't even have to care about where Rise is going. If he sees him going for the, the beeline for the Cogmore, he can just knock him straight back. So so cool. May well have actually been that I'm so fresh with waiting around to counter gank. Um, and then saw Trashy mid and just thought, well, let's go for it. Most likely, at least, you know. Gonna have a little bit. Got caught up at the pink ward, though. Down at the top side. Maokai does know he's around here. I'm gonna try get away from this. Maokai backs away immediately. Yeah, that was a good good call there by, uh, by HTK, recognizing that the uh, pink ward's caught him out. But uh, I must admit, actually, Freeze doing a great job of stopping uh, Hjarnan from going back. They wanted to go back a lot earlier than this. They've delayed them quite significantly. Yeah, looks to me. Like there's an action again. Oh, here we go. It's going to be a story going in. It's going to get the kill on to Forbidden. He has a level up. Rush. Oh, my God. He gets the Spirit oh. Rush. Leveled <laughs> up. Oh. Got the Spirit Rush. Able to get out of there. That's literally the most perfect situation there for Ari. Able to pick up that kill. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I don't think his story was aware he was going to get the level up of that. Uh, <laughs> we can give it the benefit I'd of be the doubt. So, <laughs> I'd be so mad right now if I was trashy, but that's uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles. If it was intentional by Astari, then it was extremely good play. I remember people going mad over Faker doing something very similar and deliberately flashing to get a level up off a minion once, but uh, it's the kind of thing that really separates the greats. It really is. and We talked about that... Yarn and an AOD would be having a lot stronger lane, but if we look at the CS differences, Freeze, the man. Freeze is doing exceptionally well. He's got his carry pads on. He just wants to go absolutely ham, bring Ninja Pajamas back level within this series. Yarnan still hasn't actually backed. Even though he got that uh, assist goal, even though he was able to potentially pick up Doran's blade extra, and that's causing him problems now. He can't out-trade Cogmore, assuming it's a sustained trade, which normally a Lucian could. So even though he's sustained, even though he's farming pretty decently, he's not getting zoned out like Freeze has done to other teams. This time, it's not going well, and you must shut down Freeze's Cogmore. Yes, you. it's it's not even a, an option. Like It's not like one of those that are going to, oh, it's okay if we shut down the Starry or if we shut down Cabo Shark. You have to shut down the Cogmore. He's played it so many times. And even then, it doesn't even matter if you shut down every other lane. If Freeze is fed, they should be able to get something going for them as well. As you see now, more and more trading now. As you can see Freeze taking a bit of a... A calling to the face. It's going to be too much damage, though. Shows how long Hyanan spent in lane compared to Freeze right there. Yes, it yes. does actually show a decent thing for him, but Hyanan's in a very difficult position now. He can go back. He can go back. He is sitting on quite a bit of gold. He really actually. needs to. He really does need to. But, like, the advantage he did have is kind of nullified because, as you see, Freeze is winning the, the trades. He's, he's winning the, the CS as well. He's got more gold. He might even go back with equal amounts of gold if this keeps going, if he keeps getting pushed into the tower. And we do see an early drop. Oh, dr warded though. This is actually quite dangerous here. Both teleports are up on the uh, top laners. No, they're not. They're, they're, oh, God, they're not. They're, they're, they're closing, though. They're closing it. Oh, oh! great deal there by Trashy. He goes in. He's going to sacrifice his life for it, though. He does get killed off. They do get the flash, though, away. <sighs> Nice steal, using the execute on the Q on the second uh, cast of it. Brilliant, brilliant steal there by Trashy. Yeah, still, no death. It does get, Freeze still has the opportunity to back off. This is still the focus, get the farm on Freeze. The Dragon, they can mitigate that loss over time, and NIP are still ahead overall. Abijal, he could die this. Yes, he can. He can go for the ultimate. It's going to be a nice twist of advance though to get away. He's going to flash and uh, get the pulverize. Oh. It's a flash away. He's going to get away with it. Still zones him out Very of CS though. Very nice and done. He's going to lose a lot of CS. And Ninjas and Pajamas, despite that little kind of like they lost Dragon, they're looking exceptionally good right now. I know we said that the last time it was more of their mid game, but we talk about how H2K are very good laners. They're not doing exceptionally well right now. Yeah. They seem to have really, really been doing well. And I think we might actually have a uh, dragon replay for the fight that we had there. So, 
Trashy jumps in. Wow. Really, really nice. He just oh. knew exactly just what he was to up see to. It one more time. Replay feature, still a beater. There we go. Yeah. But uh, Nip lost out just because of Trashy's skill. And I think he got out alive as well, didn't he? Or did no, he die? He did no, he didn't. He, he died. They did lose his life. It did go over to uh, I'm So Fresh. So he'd be a little bit happy with that. Probably would have been a little bit better had it gone over to Freeze. Yeah. Considering, but everyone just wanted to make sure that they got him killed as fast as possible. We do see big, big items now on Lucy, and he's got two big items. Yeah, that for is the early game. Yeah, that is true. Lot of flat AD. So now the trades should go much more his way. Look, to, look to see H2K's bot lane going much more aggressive with this item spike. They should be able to start dashing in. Cogmore will be forced to back off. He will not be able to get them low enough. That, they, that he can then zone them off the CS with the threat of a sustained fight. So, now it should be passive farming for a while to freeze. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard now for anyone really to kind of go for anything, unless someone gets caught out. I'm So Fresh is trying to jump on the Maokai to try to get that advantage that uh, Alistair has kind of built up a little bit. He's kind of, I would almost say equal at the moment in terms of item builds, in terms of his spikes. Right now he's kind of got a little bit of tankiness from the uh, Ruby Crystal, which he will be building into a Phage. Got a little bit of damage as well with the Sheen. It's going to be hard now for this bot lane. They, ha they delayed it as long as they could, and that's all they really could do in that situation. Yeah, they should be able to weather the storm for a decent amount of time, but you can see Freeze is now not looking to trade aggressively. He's sitting back, he wants to farm. That's all we're going to be seeing. And for all this time we've been focusing on the bot lane, and indeed the top lane, mid lane is actually definitely going H2K's way. The Biven has not really been suffering in that lane at all. He's been out harassing his opponent. He's been building up a CS advantage on Rise. And that is a scary prospect to deal with. Istari needs to start trying to roam. He is still able to push out, but he needs to either roam or get I'm So Fresh to gank for him. Top lane gank though, really? There's gonna be a, a, there's a sapling. Yeah, there's a sapling. You can see it there. He's gonna get caught out now. Can he I see the static? I don't know if he can see. Try it, changing the for the wall. Yeah. See if we can see, uh, if we can see him. Yeah, must have yeah, been able to see him when he was been, in the yeah, brush. He must have been able to see him. It backed off immediately. That was that's an interesting actually little tactic. The vision range that that little sapling can give you was quite nice. Yeah. Do wait to see now. It was, it was good awareness by Oduwamni to suspect that there might be a gank coming and think, well, now wouldn't be a bad time to throw down the sapling. Relatively cheap, of course, once you've got the catalyst in the ruins room for mana sustain. He did blow the culling and the wild growth, though. He said Trashy did blow anything. He didn't blow his position. He's mm. still sitting there. He's going to back away, though. But... Uh, He's spending a lot of time in this bot lane. Honestly, he should have been down here earlier when Freeze and Voidal were being so much more aggressive. Yeah. Of course, it's always easier to capitalize if your bot lane is doing a lot of burst damage. But he wanted to shut them down early as possible. And there's, at the moment, they're happy to farm a tower. So Freeze may catch back up, but he's not moving them out. Good wave clear there from Astari and Fresh. They actually might get this tower. Only these sit there. He actually killed the minion with a skew. That's going to be a good tower there for Ninjas in Pajamas. Very nicely done by them. That opens up Astari to do a roll. It's funny, isn't it, how they're really gelling a lot better than they were in the earlier stages of the tournament. I guess it's taken them these days to adapt to the sub players. Doing a pretty good job. It'll be interesting to see actually when they uh, what they do when they get back their original players. Freeze is uh, okay for now. Saving his W for when he gets zoned again, so he can try and farm a bit more safely again. Clear the pink ward there. Uduwamne. Wacken. You see a lot of uh, Maokai lanes take AD or attack speed or hybrid penetration runes. Looking for the auto attack damage. Uh, just gives you... Because most people don't want to trade with you, so you just whack them with the auto attacks while they're trying to run away. Smash him with the Q. They try and stick to you. And trade back water attacks. Yeah. Just makes it all very, very difficult. And I like this decision by Ninja's pajamas. They send Lulu back to get some more wards and to get some more tankiness. I don't know if she's going to pick up wards. She should pick up something, though. And they send Alistair as well as, well as uh, Zin Zhao. They know the dragon's coming up in five seconds. They need to start getting vision control. They are starting to try and get out. The fact that mid lane is down for them 
or, for, or against H2K means a big, big man. They can push the mid lane, then go to Dragon, forcing Ryze to choose between farm or between the Dragon. So, Ryze is actually running Ghost Flash here. It's an incredible place. Ooh, trashy. He needs to be careful, though, because Xin Zhao has a nice little power spike. He's got a lot of kind of semi-resistance. He's got some health, got some magic resist, got some armor, got the Madrid as well. H2K's team fight at this stage is stronger, though. It is very much so. Both teleports are up. They have aggro of the dragon. There is vision of this dragon, though, right in the corner there, as you can see. They are trying to get more and more on this. They're trying to see if they can aggro it a bit regen. more. It's just being regen. They're trying to zone them off. It's very nicely uh -oh. done. AOD did not get caught, but here goes Istari. He gets caught in the first one. Trash goes out. It's a good time away, but only hits one person. They're still going. The Wild Grove was used on two. I'm so fresh. They use Camo Chat and Andromeda. They're still trying to go in this. It's going to be a back away, though. I should think be the dragon. Should be the dragon. They actually forced the flash from Kabushard. Should be the dragon now. Trashy is low, but they should be able to get this one pretty damn uh, safely. AOD with the sustain. No one dies. Good disengage from Ninjas in Pajamas, though, in fairness. They could have lost a lot more. It's telling of things to come if H2K don't snowball the game in the mid game. If Freeze is that difficult to touch, that difficult to get on, when you actually get a good initiation onto Astari. That is going to be a massive problem late game where Cogmore is an impossible damage source. So, for now, NIP try and, try and, try and take some advantages back from that dragon fight. They uh, go for the push on the top lane. They should get it. They should get this. This is actually a really good rotation now. I'm rather impressed now with Enigmas in Pajamas. They've come out and they've come much better. But, oh, we do see the roam from Rise. He's trying to slow down Cabo Chat. He's got to get the pulverized. I think they've got that. So they should be able to get Cabo Chat away, but it's a flash. Oh, no. They do burn the flash though from Odromana, getting Forbidden in, getting him another kill. But in the end, they traded a tower. Honestly, this is looking on all is even looking better from when they played SK Prime earlier today. Yeah, nip. I don't know what they what they ate this morning, but it certainly seems to have done wonders for their ability to play this game. He's dead! Oh, is he He's though? Not. not quiet. I don't think it's Dari. She's got DFG. She could have killed him, but she didn't know who could be there in the exactly. back. Exactly. Yeah, I was going to say she didn't know exactly. Which I'd have gone for a it. A lot of damage. <laughs> you would have gone for it. <laughs> totally gone for it. I am. I am the KT arrows of, of solo <laughs> queue. This very, very even right now. It's going to be a star just farming up in this bot lane. As you do see, I'm so fresh, forcing Odwamana off this top lane. This is probably the first of this tournament, anyway, proper test of H2K mm. because they're not, they're, they're gaining good objectives, but it's incredibly close. Like, they're losing, they have got a, a Kog'Maw to worry about. They also have a DFG Ari to worry about. They have a couple of things that aren't really going their way. They're losing a couple of rotations a little bit too slowly. I think I remember before Odomina did go top when he lost the tower, he did take a Wraith Camp. Yeah. So, you know, it's small things like that. They are trying to use the calling. It's good that she's blocked there. Starry does have to back away as Trashy is around the side. There's not going to be much more happening. In every other game by this stage, H2K has been 5k ahead. Yes. This time, they are not. And they're facing up against something that they don't have much answer for. No, and it's not... Oh, they're not on a timer. Yeah, they're such. not. They're not out of this. No, they're not out of this. But they're actually going to lose this tower now. And that's just pure bullying. Rise was forced to stay in the mid lane to get that farm. He's only got his rod of ages stacking up that tier. They are going to try maybe trade back the mid lane turret. Doesn't have the minion. Rise can't push for me. Can't beams. push at all. Really, he's going to try. He's going to try to do something. If Rise could push really strongly, he'd be one of the most powerful split pushes in the game. Yes. <laughs> but he doesn't. He doesn't. And that is uh, a fact for which we should all be thankful. And even Rise players should be thankful for, because otherwise his team fighting would probably have to be nerfed. Yes, it, so. it would have to be nerfed quite significantly. Cabo Shard, go to try and defend his, uh, his turret. Don't really think he's going to be able to defend it for too much longer. I think they're both going to... I think both teleports should be up now. Uh, they Actually, yes, they should be up for the next dragon fight, which is still a little while away, but I don't imagine them using them when they get them straight away either. So it's going to be a, another teleport battle. And Triforce finish onto both Cabo Shard and Freeze. Starting to get those mid-game you know, team fight spikes now. It's going to be a little bit harder now for uh, SK Prime, or not SK Prime, H2K, to, uh, to deal with this.
there's still potential for them. They can still win team fights as long as they can get onto Cogmore. If they can, especially if they get Maokai onto Cogmore, then you've got real problems. But NIP, their their map play, their positioning has been so good at ever preventing flanks. They never get flanked. I haven't seen it today at all, and that can win you games if you've got a Cogmore. So. As long as they can keep abusing that fact, and as long as they keep freeze farming, they are looking golden. We will lose top lane though. We're gonna lose that to Merkai. Yeah. We will let it. TP is coming up on both top laners, although if either one is in vision of the other, neither can teleport. So. One thing I do love about sweepers is if you sweep a bush with only a pink ward on it, it will not give it you vision. Show, and yeah. I think that's such a great thing because it just, it stops you from being lazy. You, t you will naturally have to, like they missed a pink ward there up here in the uh, top corner. They swept over here and they didn't get it because they didn't think there was a ward there. There's a pink ward there. It's very nicely placed as well. It'll give them uh, the NIP a lot of vision when they're coming in. Yeah, well, that's one of the things that makes pinks a viable option. If you could sweep them to reveal them and then take them from outside the tower range, yeah. then, uh, sorry, outside of the bush range, then it'd be much, much safer, which is why you see so many teams invest so heavily in pink wards, is because they can then defend them. Yeah. It creates, it's really interesting gameplay, actually. I, I, it's one of the changes that they made this season uh, that I was most hesitant to, oh. oh. Six CSing skills there, freeze. <laughs> and uh, but it was one of the um, changes that I was most hesitant about, but it's actually one of the most interesting and effective changes I think they've made to the gameplay. Really subtle, but the way it creates flashpoints all over the map is wonderful to see. Yeah. Dragon is up at 20 seconds. Cogbot needs to go back, though, very, very soon. He is sitting on quite a bit of gold. If he wants to be able to kind of get another spike before this dragon fight, he can push this wave out. They can push mid lane out, but honestly, it might be a little bit too late. They are starting Wait, to get what? more and more uh, drag control. And Ward was running out anyway. I was very confused because it had the symbol over it, but it didn't seem <laughs> to be targetable, which won't well, because it was technically dead. Ooh, that's a good bubble. <laughs> Nearly caught out a starry. Here comes Freeze to the side, though. And here comes Odwalla. They're trying to go in. They did get a knock up from the Wild Growth. They're going to jump onto it. There goes a good knock up there. Great Nami Ultimate. Kamachar jumping in as well. Freeze was concentrate on him. And we can see Voidal going down. And Ari, we're trying to see now Freeze. He's going to keep going onto AOD. Good flash away. He's not going to be able to chase that unless he wants to flash for it. There is a, a, a ward on him as well. AOD gotta go down though in the end. They Freeze might is so scary. Him. This is a very big team fight. Trashy might try to feel like he go for this. He has no energy though just yet. They are trying to jump onto this. It is a, this is a, this is a four, three for one right now. They're trying to see if they can catch him. He's gonna be able to back away from this. He Maokai. might just execute. Can't deal with Maokai. They cannot deal with Maokai. They need to be careful though because they can still get caught. Everyone is blinking red. They're Trashy taking to... so much damage. Oh my god, Kamushai gets the kill. They can't deal with Maokai, but he might just join with the Kiana. They're gonna get the kill on the Kamushai. He tries to jump on the Fibbit, but it's not gonna work. It's gonna be a, a delayed ace, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was troll. That was very nicely done. Uh, but in the end, they delayed the dragon, but Freeze, he, sh he should have went back earlier. He needed to get a bigger item spike. They also were a little bit premature with the wild growth onto uh, I'm So Fresh. There was actually another big problem in that fight. Freeze was not doing that much damage. He wasn't zoned by H2K. He was chasing AOD, who ended up flashing away from an over red buff wall, leaving Cogmore in that isolated position from which he eventually was chased down. So, it's actually really... <sighs> That was actually one of the first positional mistakes I've seen from Freeze. He was trying to finish off AOD quickly, but he just couldn't do it. And that meant that Oduamne was free to run rampant on the, on the rest of NIP, who couldn't deal with him, didn't have a sustained damage. It's going to mean the Dragon. It's going to mean H2K starting to build up an advantage here. I, Is it though? I wouldn't, I really two. wouldn't fight here this. Here comes the TP coming in from Kamoshan. They jump into I'm so fresh. He jumps in as well. The Dragon is still proc though. Bubble missed. Freeze is it's still doing it. Astari tries to jump in as well. It's, it's going to be I'm so fresh going down first. Freeze is going to get focused out as well. He goes down to Trashy. They're trying to jump on a Dragon. It's going to be a steal though. It's not going to be actually a steal. Rise did go down. Kamoshan tried to jump onto Trashy. He did secure the Dragon in the end of all this. It's looking it's like so dicey. this is so, so dicey. He's trying to jump on the Trashy. He's get no, he won't. Yes, yes, he will. The trample passive does get that. Lulu did go down in the end as well. Charnan did not the cooldowns. They do trade it four for two. Still very much in favor of H2K. Now they have the 5k gold lead. 
now we can start to see them take some towers. Yeah, and Freeze again was in a bad position there. That time, LFG should never have taken that fight. Freeze was cut off coming from the blue buff area. Everyone else was coming from the mid lane area. There was no, or oh, sorry, the banana brush area, which isn't a banana anymore, but the, he was just a really bad position to be in. He couldn't get in range to do damage without getting in range of the front line of H2K. And then he actually took a couple of steps further forward even than he needed to, which meant that he ended up very, very dead very, very early into that fight. So NIP lost a lot of the momentum they wanted there. And for all that I talk about their laning skill, H2K are also very, very good at team fighting together. Yeah, and it was a little bit of a... Uh an odd mistake there from Ninja Pajamas. They, I, they, Cabochard went top, and as soon as they realized that H2K didn't care of the positioning of uh, Cabochard, he was forced to TP in, which means they were forced to do the engage. They could have just left it, got a bit of farm, not give up any kills. You know, I'm like, Freeze at the moment, like, normally at this stage of the game, we see him with at least two or three kills, even with NIP are doing badly. He's one and three, not really getting what he wants. He has got a decent bit of farm, though. He is building those items very nicely, so it should be interesting to see exactly how he transitions. You see now they're trying to uh, seize up on this mid lane. And now H2K are well ahead. That is starting to become an issue for MIP. They can no longer rely on... They can't be nearly as aggressive. What they were doing before was being aggressive about their sieges, which was actually forcing H2K to come at them from a single direction. That was forcing them into linear engages, which is exactly where Cogmore excelled. As it is now, though, it's H2K applying the pressure. H2K making the rotations, and that's going to uh, quite significantly increase the chance of flanks happening, increase the chance of Cogmore going down, and decrease the ability for NIP to get the fight they want, while H2K is even increasing their advantage by getting the objective control, by taking the towers, and Freeze is actually desperately trying to farm himself up. NIP are not in position to defend this tower. This is... This bad. Is bad! This is very bad rotation there. Maokai even in the mid lane gonna force that one down as well. They're gonna be able to take that as well. Be a nice pickup by them. And honestly, we're starting to see the cracks that we saw the first few days for Ninjas of Pajamas. They're not transitioning well at all through this mid game. They had a great early game and honestly, it looked a lot more promising. But one or two really sloppy engages and all of a sudden they're, they've tilted themselves into a very, very bad position. They have not got the mid game that H2K has. They still can turtle this out. This is, this is an option for them. They're nowhere near out. Mm. Absolutely not, especially when you have a Alistair and a Kogma who's able to peel. You have got Voidal as well, who can kind of help with a bit of peel as well. Once Freeze is alive, there really isn't that big of a problem. It's just the fact that he's out mispositioned himself quite a few times now and he needs to be very wary of that coming into the next few fights. Yeah. Honestly though, at this stage of the game, they can't afford to completely turtle. They can't afford to just sit in their base and do nothing else. Yeah. They, they need they need will to lose the Baron if they do Yes, that. they will lose the Baron and but Rise and Lucian. They will be able to take that pretty damn quickly. Mm. You don't get the double pop, Rise takes Baron exceptionally quickly with the spammable abilities. But again they're not in a bad position, but it definitely could be better depending on how they play the game. Yes, about uh, 7k between the teams at this point. Starting to uh, really get quite significant. Game on pause though. We are going back into it. And NIP, at the moment, right now, they're, they're actually pretty safe. They're going to be trying to get control, get some warding done while they know well, they may actually not know, but certainly while H2K is not there. Yeah. Pink Ward going down, Voidal checking the bush, not just sleeping it. So we do wait now to see exactly how to transition this. And honestly, it's been great play by H2K to be able to force the mistake there from, in the first, in those two team fights from Freeze. He was completely out positioned. It was kind of a, a, a forced error, more so than an outplay. They did kind of I feel like Freeze, the way he's playing anyway, he feels like he has to be the carry. He has to be the one to absolutely, yeah. you know, bring his team back from the depths. Um, but he just needs to be very, very careful because uh, one or two team fights more like that, he will lose his, lose his team in the game. And at the moment, the front line from NIP, with the exception of Alistar, but I'm so fresh in particular, is too squishy to deal with the damage from Rise. They need to start building to uh, him to bulk up a bit. 
And that's kind of what he's doing, but that Aegis of the Legion is not the most selfish item, which, weirdly enough, may not be the best team thing to choose right now, because it's 20 magic resist from 2,000 gold investment, roughly, is not a great amount for yourself. The health is also not that great. Amazing across your entire team, because you're multiplying that 20 magic resist by 5. Very, but, very unselfish. Yeah. But I think it, it just proves the fact that Freeze is the carry. They need to protect Freeze. And I think that's literally... He could have he could have finished off his uh, Randuins. He could have yeah. finished off... Uh, or even got the, the, the makings of a Spectral Cow, which would have been a lot more magic uh, resistance and health for himself. But yeah. again, this just kind of cements the fact that they need Freeze in these team fights. The thing in this situation, though, although this might quickly blow up, uh, the, the thing is that this is the linchpin of the fight is indeed freeze. He needs to stay alive at all costs. But if I'm so fresh is too squishy to withstand for Biven, then he's actually not going to be able to position himself correctly to peel. And that can actually cost you in the long run in terms of protecting Cogmore because your front line is not as aggressive, is not holding off their front line nearly as effectively as you'd like. For now, they're in a tough, tough, uh, tough bind here. They're going to have to hold off. And they've got Cogmorolt, which can check for vision, which is a really big deal. But there it is. <laughs> yep. There that's it is. why. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. You did say it out there. They do have the vision. Honestly, if H2K go for it, they can't get it. But it would open them up to losing the game. Because they aren't exactly on a huge lead right now. They haven't got a pretty big. <laughs> it's a big. It is a big lead. It's about just over 6,000. If H2K can get a fight right now, I think they'll win it. Yes, but the thing is, the sixth man, who will be on the sixth man? It's the Baron play. If, if they go for it, they are actually going to go for it. Here they go. They are going to stick around. They are going to see Ninja's pajamas trying to rotate for it. I don't They're know. They're out of position. They, they are out of position. Boy, he is trashing. He doesn't really know if he wants to go for this. They are going to transition in. It's going to be a free Baron. They have no idea this is happening. It's not ideal. Right there. Cogmore should be more regular about checking now. Showing yourself elsewhere if you are the best checking mechanism for your team can cost you but now nip their goal is very very clear. sit in your base and wait wait for the baron buff to go wait for freeze to get more items sit back farm up hold on to what you've got probably sacrifice the inner towers and at that point lose a lot of gold get down to 10k but if you can hold for long enough there will be no objectives for your opponent to take away anymore. No, you see a dragon again going over to H2K. Tracky does great with those timers. <laughs> he could have suicide on so fresh and kind of get the uh, the the dragon steal, but Whitley see getting that steal earlier in the day or in the game, I should say. Not likely he was going to be able to take it. Honestly, with this Baron Book, I imagine H2K will whittle down the lanes until inhibitor turrets. Whether or not they can take the inhibitor turrets because of the low range they have with their, with their champions mm. is a different story. They've generally been very, very good at sieging H2K. They are one of the best challenger teams at capitalizing off an advantage that they get. So, obviously, they'll be trying to spike it down with Hyan and getting the double shot, the Triforce, Soul, he doesn't have a Triforce, but he'll be trying to get those double shot passives in Take one, walk away, take one, walk away. And because Oduwamne and Forbiven are so strong, they can try to zone it out. Is That's that a Zeke's a Herald. Is it, it is a Zeke's Herald. No, no, we have seen that once or twice, actually. Oh, that's really once. I was more concerned about Kabushard. He also built an Aegis. Yes, it does stack between the two people who have Aegises, but it doesn't stack anymore. Like, and it's not a great economic item for that's a, a good top laner. So that's an interesting question. For any of you League Mathematicians, can you work out the efficiency of double Aegis nowadays? It used to be that double Aegis was really, really good. It was, it was a very solid choice. But as it is now, 20 magic resist on each, oh. the, uh, each of the two front liners here. I suppose it does give them an extra health regen for two. Honestly, though, at the point of the moment, with Maokai being exceptionally tanky, has got the Frozen Heart, has got the Spirit Bazaar, I would have preferred to see something a little bit more selfish. Maybe when a random is over, because Lucian is with his double tap and Lee Sin with the attack speed. Oh, they're actually going to go in. That's a little bit of a, a miscommunication. I'm so fresh went in, but they didn't really want to go in. There's the TP coming this in. Is death. This is I'm so fresh going down. They have got. Uh, put, uh, 
Oh, Gromina in the back line with Freeze. Here comes the teleport. Or he's pulling from Yard and he does get it across the side of the team. They are trying to get more and more down. That was a horrible miscommunication from NIP. That I'm so fresh should not have flashed into that. I'm so fresh should not have flashed in, but assuming that was the call that they made, Freeze should have been trying to follow it up a little bit closer, but the problem was I'm so fresh did not consider the possibility of teleport coming in behind them. When that happened, the back line was doomed. That's breaking the turtle shell. That is really kneecapping NIP's chances in this game. They are now going to have to contend with the minion pressure, with their disadvantages in gold, with their lack of items still on Freeze, and with the scaling problem that H2K have evaporating so long as they're on the aggressive, I really feel like that may be it for NIP. That was just such a, a crazy call there. From the, it seemed to be half of them said yes, half of them said no. It was just, it, it had to be down to miscommunication. And, and you know, they are, have to, they have to play this as a best of ones. There is no kind of coming back. Oh, yeah. freeze. Abandoned ship. No, they had vision. They had, they had a, a, a pretty general idea that he was coming in from the side. They had got vision of him. So yeah. the reason for that engage, by the way, from I'm So Fresh, was he was desperate to try and get a catch. That yes. was what he wanted above all else. But avoiding the catch from your opponents is much more important than getting one. Because if you think about it from the perspective of, of outcomes again, NIP gets the catch. Great. They slow down the push from H2K. H2K will wait for their guy to respawn. They will, you know, gain 40 seconds off of the Baron buff, which had probably actually already run out by that point. But regardless, 40 seconds longer to get freeze to get some farm. And then that's it. NIP lose a catch. They lose the inhib, potentially the game. That is not a good outcome when it's uh, actually kind of a, like a 50-50, because you don't know whether your opponents are going to be able to engage on you or not. They probably didn't know whether that ward was in there or not. But I'm so fresh did not consider all the possibilities and uh, ended up paying for it. So. I really like the Zeke's Herald on AOD, mainly for the fact that for Bivin, has got spell vamp. He does use it. I'm not quite sure if Zeke's Herald does work with spell vamp as well. But if it does, you also have, you know, uh, Lee Sin, uh, Trashy on Lee Sin, who will want to be getting up. They also want to keep Garnet as alive as possible. Give, you know, Blade the Room King doesn't give you the most amount of life steal, but it does help when you have the Zeke's Herald being able to throw it in there as well. They do set the siege up. Minions are already starting to uh, accumulate in this bot lane. They are going to have to send someone. It's going to be Freeze. But they are going to have to be very, very careful of a, a, just a straight-up fight. Saving grace for NIP right now is the inhib they lost is the mid lane, and H2K cannot split push. If they had Twisted Fate right now, it would be over. There would be no way they could contend with it. As it is, it's still dicey. If that tower drops, they're dead. Yeah. If they get into a team fight, they're dead. Anything else is going to be a question of just clinging on by your fingernails, by the molecule of creatine. Is it creatine? The keratine. keratine That's the one. Yeah, uh, the molecule of <laughs> keratine that, that is that is left clinging from your fingernail to the game. I thought you were referencing creatine, the AD carry. Yeah, well, uh, that was that was what confused <laughs> me. Uh, I, 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 my my good luck charm when I play AD carry is my molecule of creatine's hair would be a very that'd be a very strange one. Yes, but, um, that would be a, a little bit of a weird a weird kind of thing. But at the moment, though. NIP, they're just going to be able to back them off. Unfortunately up, for them, Baron and Dragon are up, which are two big objectives. Obviously, Dragon being worth more within the late game, but are they going to go for a little bit of a sneaky Baron bait going around the side? H2K always prefers to bait Baron rather than do Baron up first. But if they see no one taking the bait, yep, they're just going to go for it. So yep. there we go. Should be a free Baron. There's Can they actually dive powers when they've got this? Honestly, I don't. There's nothing really any of the damage can do about that. They have to accept the Baron was going to go down again. So we see it going down. That's the second Baron going in dragon. favor. Might lose the inhib for it. Is it a dragon? Yeah, 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 yeah. They are actually picking it up. I'm surprised. It didn't take long enough. <laughs> Pippin, uh, mid lane inhibitor did respawn. You know, if H2K had actually had the dragon pit warded right now, that could have been game. 
That could have been game. They do get the inhibitor though in the end. To be honest, uh, we kind of expected that. Not really a lot Ninja Scoot Damage can do right now. Bottom inhib was inevitably going to drop, but if H2K had seen Nip committing to that dragon, they would have gone for the top tower and ignored the mid inhib, taken that down by tanking with Oduamne, and then win the game because they'd get two inhibs pretty much for free after that. Yeah, big minion wave though in favor. They have a decent little uh, wave there with the Orbit Ascension, the Glitter Lance, and the. Uh, the slow of the void ooze. This is just a question of if someone gets caught from a nip. Anyone is low enough to be bursted right now, squishy enough. Same is not true of H2K. Maybe sending Maokai as the designated split pusher. Yeah. You can't really threaten the actual towers. All he can do is try and force Freeze to get over there. But I think what they're going to do is go for the 45 dive here. Yeah, they're going to try to go for something. They are seeing if they can get maybe. They do use the pulling though, nothing really kind of comes of it. They're going to see if they get a flank with Maokai. He's going to keep pushing it. He has got super minions now. That's the big thing. Lucian is still up in this top lane though. He's trying to get as much as they can. And as much as, you know, Baron buffs go, they're not really using this a lot. They haven't really got any kind of crazy hard engage. No, they don't. That is a weakness in their comp. I mean, Maokai is a good engager, but he's short ranged. If he can get on you, you're not getting away. But. For now, he's actually been forced to go down to bot lane and uh, deal with that pushing wave of minions. And H2K are still struggling to close out the game. Nip are no longer taking any bait. They're just sitting in their base. They're waiting. They are waiting until the end of time when goal has no meaning. Yes, and uh, for just under 40 minutes now, and we are getting to that stage now where people are starting to pick up their full items. I'm surprised that H2A haven't pushed for an engage. Honestly, with Baron Buff underneath the tower, had they got the, the flank on Freeze, which I they think that's the, I think that's the play they should have made. Yes, I think that would have been the best play. And honestly, even if they came out of it, you know, four for three, they probably still would have been able to keep uh, Lucian alive long enough to take the tower and dig back the base even more. Even if they had to go back and then come back again, it's a lot harder for NIP to defend that with two inhibitors turrets down than just one. That is definitely true. All they need is the second inhib turret. H2K might try and pull something tricky now with this. They can get control over both the areas, uh, both the bottom and the middle and the top, actually. They can just control complete vision outside of the base of NIP. And if they can do that, bait NIP out of position to defend one inhib and then swap to the other, top or mid, uh, or top, top or bot, and then just face tank it, they can get that to work in their favor very much so. They can really do a good job. If they can just get that one more tower. But at the moment, they are lacking the ability to even slowly chip down towers, which is what we normally see out of H2K. But Istari is doing a lot to hold them back by just threatening to charm Kianan if he goes for that, that, that walk-in, double-tap, walk-out thing. Yeah, oh, this is the Kali Dog coming out from Kianan. Doesn't do a great bit of damage, more like a, a, a massage rather than a pulling. Ooh. They do try to go damage, for a though. little bit. They are trying to keep going onto this. They have to deal with Maokai though. Maokai's going to be able to put this mid lane again. They haven't got Cavill Shard though. He has got his TP. There is a ward very crucially just to the side. That's a lot of damage on the trash. He needs to be so careful. Alistar can still stonewall the Maokai push as well. So, Yannan's actually going... Aggressive. That's the kind of thing we expect to see out of him normally. Yeah, mid lane inhibitor will be. It down. I'm so fresh. Will he get a bit over aggressive? They are getting. They've been ulted. Yeah, yeah they did. did ult. He's trying to get something. This seems to be like they're afraid to go in just in case. There's the good charm, though. They do force a lot of damage at the Forbidden. He'll have to back away. They have no longer any more Baron buff. Maokai, though, is pushing out on the. On the an inhibitor turret, they are an accept inhibitor. Accept the loss of mid. They have to accept it, they have to just try and go onto this. They really need to decide really which one they want to go for. Free is going to try maybe do something. They have left Cabo Shard though to defend. This the pressure is, a, is going to kill them. This is going to be too much pressure. They can't defend it though. I don't think, I think HTK is just too afraid to kind of go in onto this. They are going to be able to successfully defend this for the moment. And Each push is so hard for Nip to deal with. They are, the moment they put a foot wrong in this dance, they are going to get thrown off the stage. All it takes is one mistake for Biven. Back up to full health. H2K is so sustained in this push. 
slowly, slowly. It's like water on rock. It's a riverbed. They're making an oxbow lake in this. Well, there's a Tengen, there's some GCS and geography, but <laughs> they haven't been able to get anything done, except the loss of the Indian. Yeah, there's a calling again. It's going to jump onto a, a Starry, not really going to do much actually. They might be able to defend us a little bit. If they're going to go catch up the freeze, maybe they should have gone out that freeze. We'll take it very, very low. He didn't have a Quicksilver Sash, and they didn't blow the Mikhails, though. So two very important cooldowns that haven't been used as of yet. The longer this goes on for H2K, though, the harder it gets. The Baron will come up again in a minute, and I dare say it, it will not be strong enough to contest it. But the more Freeze scales up, the more Cabochard gets tanky, the more iFresh gets tanky without these inhibs going down, without the bottom or top inhib towers going down, the harder it gets for them to see the bot, the bot and the top inhib. I, I feel like HUK may have missed their chance to dive now. Honestly, I'd have to agree with you right now because we see some pretty big items onto Alistair right now, as well as Sin Zhao able to get some resistances onto him as well. There's a big, there's a calling out from Park Yard, and he might have left himself in a bit of a comp compromising position. AOD as well. So Vivid went in. There's the catch. They're going to have to use the Q, though. Oh, there's the Lee Sin does go down. This is huge. You know, NIP can get so much more from this. They're going to get the Tilly Fee. It's going to be cancelled. That was big. That was a huge benefit. There it is. AOD's going to go down, though. He does use Mikhail's. They're going to get one. Hjarnan is in a bit of a sticky situation. He's going to try to get away. He does get seen out. He will have to flash over. They don't get his. Will they keep chasing? I don't think they will. They're going to go for Dragon. They need to be careful, though. Ari is going to be the one to deal with the mid lane. Dragon and Baron are up. I doubt NIP will go straight for the Baron right now. The three-man contest is too dangerous from H2K, but that relieves a lot of the pressure. That enables them to get Vision outside their base again. This enables them to increase their gold uh, or decrease their gold deficit now and they're starting to outscale are they gonna go for baron this i don't like a, this no no this is a, this is far too risky if they get they can get but if they, they catch a drum they do catch a drum they need to be careful of oh, though Bivin. they are gonna try frizz is freeze is very well positioned though they're trying to go onto him they do get the polymorph onto him he's gonna have to flash away oh drama you are left by yourself lucian in the back line i'm so fresh is dealing with it he can't deal with it they might lose the baron for this they haven't got a jungler for the next 60 seconds that is going to be a big big problem for them because if h2k don't go for that if they actually just go back heal up really really quickly on for Bivin. he is just about healing up right now and then just go for, to break the turtle break the siege they're not going to go for it they're going to go for the baron i think h2k there have actually missed a trick they should have gone for the inhib tower it is the higher priority objective for them right now this will give i'm so fresh just enough time to respawn before the push comes in so back in the situation we've had for a very very long time right now h2k with the baron buff they're going to shop as well i expect and uh set up to push, but can they break Nip? Honestly, if they don't win this game, the longer, as you say, the longer it goes on, the less important gold leads become, because you just end up with the items anyway, purely from stalling it out. Mm. The scarier becomes for H2K, because Nip have got an incredibly good scaling team. We saw how much freeze damage it yeah. can do. He just finished his IE. He is going to be absolutely shredding through Maokai, through Lee Sin, and if he catches up to Forbivit, Forbivit needs to flash away immediately. And it's a QSS now as well. He's much harder to focus out. He's only one item away from a complete build. Nip are scary now. They have real damage. They have real tanks. Everything is too real for H2K to handle right now. Unless they can catch Freeze. And he's just so hard to catch in situations like these where you're defending inhibs. In some ways, H2K want to try and bait them out of their base, but they know Nip will not take any bait. They will not leave their base until they are at full build. This is going to be so much harder. We saw how much the freeze was chunking Odwamina. Look at the amount of armor on Odwamina right now. He has got so many <laughs> tanky stats, and he is getting chunked. Look at this. He's getting absolutely destroyed. I think it was like 20 auto attacks, just auto attacks, and he would be down. This is incredibly scary right now. They need to make a decision. They need to get a good engage. They have got everybody in the mid lane. I think I think they just pajamas. I think they've outscaled. I think they're at the stage now where it doesn't matter. I would hold your horses just a bit though. 
there's still Flash. Flash is the thing right now. If Forbidden, Flash engages on Freeze, this could be huge. Oh wow, well, Drama Legend take it down against Polymorph as well. Will they be able to kill him though? Down. They do, they can't get out of the tank. They get a go Astari, uh, uh, Zarya as well. The Cullen coming up on the side, Freeze trying to get away. They are trying to go in onto Lulu. Voidal able to get away from there. Here comes the Spirit Rush as Freeze's well. Freeze's W is out. Freeze's W is out. They are going to be able to get Astari as well. They are still going onto this. Camel does not get the, uh, the pulverized. This is going horribly, horribly wrong. They do get the shutdown onto Rise though. Freeze. Heal up, heal up, heal up. They can still free up. It's still a two for two. They trade up mid laners and top laners, they might just try to push this bot lane. Trash is tanky enough. They should have gone straight for the they tower. They should have just gone straight for the tower. They did get the inhib in the end. But that's that nothing. That we, we've yes. seen <laughs> Nip does not care about their middle inhib. If we look at the structures destroyed tab at the end of the post game, it's going to say like 19 structures destroyed for H2K because they have destroyed every structure. I mean, sorry, they've destroyed <laughs> enough numbers for every single structure. Just never the ones that matter. Honestly, I think my point about them outscaling them has happened right now because that was a barren dump H2K. Mm. They had the extra stats, they had the extra regen, and they still traded equally. And even in the end, Freeze was left untouched. He was able to clear waves in the end. They only got the inhibitor, and as you say, they've done that. But look at the top lane. The top lane's just been pushing all by itself. They will get a lot of damage. They won't be able to take it. This is going... It's, it's erosion. It's Yeah, it's erosion. Like the water, like you say, it's like... A, waves against the cliff, they're just going to keep pushing it down. It's it's, it's going to be crazy to say, but H2K, I think they've choked. I think they've missed a couple of tricks, and I think they've literally been too safe. H2K now, if they can catch Freeze though, that could be huge, but yeah. they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. It's not going to be enough. It might be able to still be able to push out the long term, maybe, but they've got the peel there. It's, it's not going to happen. Might go for the engage, but NIP will not die. Mercurial picked up now as well. He's got the gold on that, uh, on that Cogmore. So H2K are now in a situation where they basically now need to look at Fnatic's playbook. They need to look for the Fnatic brush. Like stack everyone in one brush, catch them out. Because there's no way the straight team fights will go their way anymore. Forbidden doesn't even have his flash available. He did, I think, pick up Distortion Boots because it's coming up very, very quickly. Yeah, indeed. But this, it's just too difficult for them to deal with. And the, the inhibs are, 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 are regenerating. We're at 50 minutes. 50 minutes in this game. This is far too much right now. We actually see the Yomus was used. Actually, the active is now gone. We don't have that kind of instant assassination. We do see a couple of GAs that will be popped up every now and again. One on I'm So Fresh and one on Hjarnan. This is so tense. The next team fight, whoever comes out with the advantage, could end the game. This, the dead timers are long enough. If it's a three for two in favor of Ninja's pajamas and Freeze survives, that could be the game. It really, really could. But this power is actually dropping very, oh, very low. They're gonna go in. Oh, Dramana trying to go in. They're trying to jump into the everywhere. It's a great pulverize as well. They get another great Astari with a brilliant Zonyas as well. They're trying to keep going. Maokai is down. They're trying to keep going as well. Astari did get out alive. That's a Jonas no oh, going strong. It's amazing, but they aren't able to get anything else on. Ahyanan is too big right now. He used the calling. It's gonna keep going on. Alistair will get alive. It's a one for Freeze one. can't defend the solo. Freeze cannot defend the solo. He has to flash away. They will lose another inhibitor. He needs to defend the base. They can get this inhibitor back away. It's going to be so, so tough, though. They might be able to get some more kills, though. <laughs> oh, my God! There's the teleport in from the side. Kamachan gets a good one. Oh, 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 this could be it. They could get this one out. They're trying to get out so fresh. They get Another the engage is it. There it is. They're going to get one more on the AOD. He will go down. He's going to try to sacrifice him out. It's a double kill. Kamachan is trying to still go onto this. I don't think he can really catch onto anybody. They need to deal with the minions. They need to find a lane. They need to push it. They need to get an inhibitor off this. They can't, by the looks of it. They are going to go back to deal with the minions sitting in their base. 50 seconds still on the two uh, last deaths from H2K. But what they did, crucially, there, that has changed the momentum in that fight as compared to all those other attempts, is they forced NIP to engage on them. That time it was Kavachar going in to start the fight. And although Istari blew a, a ton of their focus by ulting in and Zonyas, Breeze was a little bit more extended that time, so we had to be a little bit more careful. And Hyanan wasn't the one dashing in to go aggressive. He was then dashing out, kiting back, and a little bit safer as a result, not focused out. But now we're at the stage of the game, one inhib back up as well, where two inhibs down may not be enough map pressure. As it was at the start of this endless siege, the siege that never ends, 
then maybe two inhibs would have been too much for them to cope with. But now Cogboy's DPS is so high, super minions get melted. He's actually gone with a Zephyr as well. And another little interesting thing as well, Kabushad has swapped out his Ionian boots for Merc Treads. He does not, he needs that tenacity. And I totally agree with this particular pickup because he doesn't need the cooldowns. He just needs, he got three very impressive pulverized on the three people, but it was just unfortunate that he wasn't able to stop the stuns, as we do see now. This could be huge. They're going to try to go in for this. Baron is still being taken down, though. Will they be able to kill it? They're not going to be able to kill it just yet. Here comes the pulling from the side. They're going to jump on the freeze. They do get Nami, though. AOD has gone out. Fabiba needs to get out of this fight now. Astari is still very, very healthy. He tries to jump out of it. Odwamina is trying to keep onto freeze. Kamuchar jumped on the Fabiba and on the Trashy. Trashy gets caught too tanky. Well. They're too, too tanky. tanky. They get the shutdown onto Kogma. This is huge. They can end the game right here. They pop the GA. They're trying to go more and more. Astari, there are minions in the base as well. They are going to get another one. Rise did go down uh... as well. Odwamina will not go down he is too big right now they lose an inhibitor it's a triple kill that my friends is the game it's going to be h2k winning this series amazing amazing game or is it yes they are because they have got the two okay <laughs> or is it dun, dun, dun. no it was so so hard for h2k to get the close out on that game for such a long time they battered against that wall they battered against nip and they held strong for so incredibly long but in the end they fall to a team fight at the baron where freeze got hit by a root from the rise and no. odwamne and, Odram <laughs> yeah, and then yes. odwamne <laughs> stuck to him for like the rest <laughs> of the team fight but that was the problem that was very, very good play, though, from both teams. Neither Both teams made mistakes, obviously, but they yeah. both recovered from them exceptionally well. Ninja Pajamas, look, they looked down and out. Heisuke, hey, though, made a couple of, you know, kind of mid-game decision-making, which maybe didn't go in their favor, but they do <laughs> take it in the end. Hearts going 90. That was a fantastic game. I think once they got the bottom lane inhibitor turret, yeah. that was game. There was no well, real way that they could defend that unless they at that stage them. they had the they could team fight them though. That was the yes. thing. That at that stage it was really just whoever won the next team fight, and the bottom inhib was a, a means of trying to force it, a means of trying to get the Baron for free. But in the end, H2K are the winners of that one game which brings them first place in the tournament overall because, of course, it was a best of three finals. They came in with a one-game advantage from the winner's bracket, which means they now have two overall out of three. They are the winners. They go home with $7,000, I believe. $7,500. Congratulations there to H2K. A fantastic <sighs> win for them. Commiserations, though. Two Ninjas in Pajamas. They played a fantastic game. Best day we've seen from them by oh, far. Oh, God, yes. It absolutely. It's so much better. It's been absolutely brilliant to see Ninja's Pajamas come back to what we expected them to be at the start of this and tournament. And they're running two subs. Yeah, exactly. They they played very, very well. <laughs> Starry, Starry even, uh, and I'm so fresh, apart from a couple of maybe solo queue mistakes, yeah. if you like to call them, they played exceptionally well. They meshed well with the team and it's unfortunate that it is unfortunately a best of three and they did have a game loss, uh, a game in hand for H2K. So, you never know. It could have been, you know, if they had won that game, it obviously would have been anybody's game because Nin Ninja's Pajamas would have been taking that momentum. Yeah. Very much so. But unfortunately, they don't get that chance. It is H2K. Congratulations to them. Well played indeed to H2K. And that is it from us for this entire tournament. That is it for the Gamescom LOL Challenge powered by TeamSpeak and Overwolf. So for one last time, if you feel like checking out the sponsors of this tournament, do check out Faceit, a service which will enable you yourself to play in games uh, hopefully as exciting and interesting as this, matched up with players of a similar skill, uh, competing for prizes with, uh, you know, in your bronze league or whatever else, uh, going with the base rate there. But, of course, also Overwolf, nice collection of different apps and software to help you play your games as effectively as you possibly can. And TeamSpeak, one of the greatest voiceover IP servers, server programs we've ever seen in the gaming community. So... Congratulations to H2K, commiserations to NIP. Ah, and also, if you uh, f enjoyed my casting, feel free to check me out at, at Spuddington. And if you've enjoyed Ushin, <laughs> um, you'll get there. Ushi. I eventually will make you say it. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, uh, if you've enjoyed Oisin Sauce over here, then check him out at lo uh, LOL Blood Penguin. That is it for us. And we'll hopefully see you for a future event. I do not know what the next face it challenger stuff will be but uh certainly if it's as good as this last game 
will be looking forward to it.